Vaping has been in the news a lot. Vaping. 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 Nobody knows too much about it. So what exactly is vaping? When someone is vaping, he or she uses a device that can be small like a traditional cigarette or look like a USB drive. And they bring it to their mouth and either with a button or just by inhaling a battery activated heating coil warms up a substance that then is aerosolized. And aerosolized means made into tiny particles that you can inhale in and they go through the mouth, through the main airway, down into the lungs where they can mingle with oxygen and carbon dioxide that are in the small air sacs of the lung, and then the residual is exhaled. Unlike a cigarette, which burns tobacco and produces smoke that contains nicotine, tar, carbon monoxide, and formaldehyde, and anywhere between 4,000 to 7,000 other chemicals, vaping is relatively safer. Vaping usually contains propylene glycol, a vegetable glycerin-based liquid with nicotine, flavoring, and other chemicals and metals. But no tobacco. Occasionally, people can get acutely sick from, from traditional cigarettes, especially people who have underlying lung disease like asthma. But the main harmful effects of traditional cigarettes are what we see built up over days, years, and decades. Things like cancer, vascular disease, as well as COPD and airways disease. You are inhaling the results of that burned tobacco into the lungs. In an autopsy or a surgical specimen of a patient, we find black tar lining the airways of the lungs. I think that people have come up with statistics like vaping is 95% safer than cigarette smoking, but I don't think that's based in any rigorous study. We don't have evidence right now that vaping causes those same long-term health outcomes, but they've only been around for about 10 years, so we have a lot to learn. The first documented mention of an electronic cigarette was as early as 1930, when a man named Joseph Robinson filed a patent for an electric vaporizer in May 1927. The idea was to create a device that was easy to use to vaporize medicinal compounds and not burn the user. But the product didn't reach the market. Another patent was filed a few decades later, this time specifically for a smokeless, non-tobacco cigarette. I am the first inventor and patenter of the e -cig. The reception I got was they didn't understand. It was difficult to explain. Gilbert argued that his invention presented a safe and harmless way for people smoking tobacco. It was a battery light that would produce the heat. The liquid crippling glycol glyceride is good for your lungs, could go around the light. But Gilbert couldn't find a company that wanted to mass produce his device. And so years passed and his patent expired. Eventually, in the early 2000s, the first commercially successful e-cigarette was made in China. They arrived on American shores in 2007. Today's device generally comes in a couple of different forms. There are the disposable ones, which can be used once, and then there are these ones that look like cigarettes, but are actually battery-operated, and they're called cigalikes, or e-cigs. There are the vape mods, which are two-piece devices with the battery and the tank attached that can be detached or in one single body. And then there are the vape pods, which are like the jewel pods, a two-piece device, which instead of a tank, you use a pod which is refilled or replaced. The juice that one puts in the pod can vary. You can buy a flavored one off the shelf, or you can even make your own. This charges on like a USB thing. You put the this in there, and then you just inhale. And exhale. <laughs> this is the Enjoy. I just love it, honestly. This is like, the flavors are so much better. I think vaping is a healthy alternative to smoking, 100%. Maybe not so much, but it's better for you than cigarettes, 100%. Flavoring is added to a lot of e-cigarettes and vaping devices in order to make the nicotine or cannabinoid taste better. 
Some people think also makes it more appealing to a more diverse crowd of people, including younger buyers of vaping devices. Many of those chemicals being used to flavor it, we have some experience with being ingested. So we know, for example, peppermint oil might be safe to be eaten, but most of the chemicals in these devices we don't know anything about when they're inhaled. We're still learning about the effects of vaping, but the preliminary results are in, and they don't look so great. So on an x-ray, our lungs generally look black because air is radiolucent and we don't see it on x-ray. But in people who have vaping-induced lung injury, you see white on both sides of the lung and distal enough, far enough into the lung to have an effect sort of like pneumonia, where there's inflammatory cells found in the small air sacs. That sort of concern shouldn't translate into mass hysteria over vaping, at least according to some experts. But most doctors seem to advise one thing, caution. We let the mice vap for a little bit more than one year and for sure they develop lung cancer and develop the precancer uh, uh, the change in blood tissue. We found that nicotine per se actually causes DNA damage. And we found that e-cigarette vap vaping also causes damage in mice, in lung, heart, and bladder. Vaping is that definitely is not safe. I'm trying to work my way off this, you know? So it's really, as long as people are using it for the tool that it is, which is to help you cut down, then it's 100% such a benefit to you. I know it's not good for me, but I've been smoking for 20 years, and this is the first time that I've ever gotten off smoking. It's, it's helped me for now. While we still have so much to learn about vaping, at the end of the day, one thing is pretty clear. It's not going anywhere anytime soon.